All right. Thanks, Rusty. And uh, how about a round of applause for Casey one more time? Thanks, Casey. All right. Uh, you guys probably were looking for a guy by the name of uh, Jean-Marc Dubois. And unfortunately, he got sick. And uh, you got stuck with me instead. So congratulations to all of you guys. You know, Arnie said that uh, one thing that you shouldn't or that you should do is uh, network with a lot of people around here. Well, I networked with a lot of people, and I met this guy by the name of Paul Toussaint. And about a day ago, I get a phone call from Paul. And look at me now. I'm standing right here talking in front of you guys. So uh, hope you enjoy this, and you will, you will get some, uh, uh, you'll get some good information out of this. So, um, just a brief background about me so you can understand kind of where this uh, presentation is going to go. Uh, I do work for Hexion, uh, new business development manager. And uh, that's a glorious job. I get to find new markets. Uh, I get to do things with R&D, uh, equipment manufacturers, and, uh, and lots of nice people in the forest products industry. So um, it's a great job. I kind of think of myself as a manufacturing guy that knows codes and uh, knows adhesives. Since, uh, since I do have my boss sitting in the room, I should probably say I'm an adhesives guy uh, that knows manufacturing. So uh, we heard a presentation earlier from uh, Gentlemen from Oregon State. We got any other beaver believers out there? There we go. Well, good. Glad to see we got some. Uh, when I went to Oregon State, it looked nothing like uh, what they're talking about it's going to look like. Uh, PV Hall was a very, very small hall um, out there on the edge of campus. So, anyway. Um, Back to my experiences a little bit. So 14 years in glue lamb. I, I should back up. Four years in molding and millwork and, and 10 years in glue lamb. I ran a glue lamb plant. So um, you'll see that a lot of my uh, discussion talks about manufacturing, um, equipment, and adhesive and how they all come together. So how about a, uh, a quick show of hands? Do we have any uh, laminated beam guys out there? Wow, one. Well, you know, as we sat here and listened to the, the talk this morning, um, it was a lot about CLT. And the thing that came it, um, to me during that talk was, you know, how important glue lamb beam is uh, to the CLT process. So um, uh, you'll find out that I have a passion for glue lamb. And uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge that in this great new mass timber uh, movement that glue lamb beam is, is absolutely critical um, to the whole process. So um, let's, let's not forget those guys. I did see the, the one show of hand out there um, in the room. So uh, thanks, for, thanks for being there for us all. All right, so uh, one more quick show of hands. Do we have? Who do we have in the building, like architects, engineers? Um, OK. Um, we got codes people. Do we have, I'm trying to make sure I, I uh, couch my, my talk to all you guys out there. So um, architects, engineers, manufacturers. OK. Good. All right, we'll we'll keep uh, we'll keep moving on. So, um, uh, I did tell you that I worked in the codes a bit. Uh, was with AITC, and uh, started with those, or not with them as far as working, but you know as far as uh, going to the technical committee meetings. Um, you'll hear some stuff about 405 if you stick around CLT very often 
and that is the uh, structural code um, for adhesive. So kind of part of that. All in all, about 25 years experience. I had a lot more hair, a lot more hair when I started, um, but you know, it's been a good ride. So, um, CLT, you know, very exciting. Um, CLT building movement. Um, it is the newest engineered wood products to come uh, to North America in over 20 years. So, you know, very exciting. And actually what's interesting is all the involvement that, that we have at all levels. You know, we have uh, uh, USDA forest products from the universities, Timberland stewards, meaning Forest Service, BLM, state, you know, private companies, all the code bodies, architects, engineers, forest products companies, uh, builders, consumers, um, and let's not forget the, some of the state economic development agencies that have uh, given money to these guys to get started. So, uh, that being said, I do have to tell you a quick uh, joke that I heard in today's political climate. We heard about building a wall, and one of my associates said, if we're going to build a wall, let's make it out of CLT. So there you go, Mike Montooth. There's your, there's your plug. All right, so adhesives and CLT. I mean, really, in the world of adhesives, um, I like to think that we hold the world together. So. You know, without adhesives, there wouldn't be any engineered wood products. Um, so in this infant industry of CLT, you know, should you be, should you be concerned at all with, with, you know, this brand new standard that's out there in the world? Well, not really. It's been firmly rooted in structural gluing history. You know, uh, glue lamb in North America, the first plant started in, in 1934. One of the first standards that came along um, to get everything rolling and standardize the industry was in 1963. We've got the, the current standards. Uh, if you look at the P, PRG 320, you've got the A190. That's a structural gluing standard. That's been around for a long time. AITC, well, I should back up. I just dated myself there. How about ANSI 405, um, structural adhesive standard? Um, and, and really that standard was put into place so that at the end of the day, um, glue is as strong or stronger than the wood in any kind of situation. So you get it wet, you get it hot, you get it, uh, you know, you boil it, you do anything like that. At the end of the day, that glue should be as strong or stronger than the, than the wood itself. Uh, there's actually a test, it's a 3434, it's an 800 cycle boil test, and if you have a really good structural adhesive, it actually fortifies the wood, and the wood will come out looking like, uh, let's say, oatmeal. It's almost mush when it's done, but the glue line itself is intact, structural, and actually um, uh, uh, protects the wood, and so you have, you have a, a, a real sturdy, uh, durable glue line. So, um, and then finally there's, um, um, if you look at the PRG, all the specifications in there for, for good gluing techniques, um, you know, came right out of the glue lamp manual. Uh, you look at uh, thickness uh, control, moisture content control, um, you know, all the things that, that Casey was talking about that has to happen on a daily basis in a, in a structural plant um, came right out of stuff that's it's been there for uh, 50 years. So should you be concerned? Absolutely not. Um, you know, the, the adhesive suppliers, um, industry, you know, manufacturers, we all know what we have to do to, to make sure we got good durable bonds. And then finally, you know, if you think of CLT, it's got the European roots. I mean, it's been 25 years in existence, um, and it's well established. 
Um, and uh, I would tell you, well, look. So, you know, part of this track was to, was to talk about uh, CLT manufacturing, supply, and startup. So, how do you start with a dream and make it turn into reality? Well, in my experience, it's start with the end in mind, right? So, figure out who do you want to be. Do you want to be a big uh, or a, a small volume guy that does custom? Do you want to be a large volume guy that does more stock type applications? Or do you want to be the combination of the two? So, what you really need to know is how you're going to make all that happen with the, the adhesive of your choice. So really, you've got to go out into the world and you've got to find out what adhesives are available and, and then what, you know, what they're really all about. So what are the handling ca uh, characteristics? What are the production limitations, the performance attributes? You know, how's the bond quality? How's the durability? Um, how's the heat and chemical resistance? So, you know, a lot of manufacturing guys aren't experts in adhesives at all. Um, but if you look hard enough, you can, you know, you can find the right guys. Go out there and, and figure out who's out there and what your choices are. All right. Um, so, effective uh, gluing is usually a balance of adhesive choice, application equipment, um, and pressing equipment. You know, if you take any one of those three out of the equation, uh, you're probably going to end up in trouble. And then I threw this in there just for the rest of you manufacturing guys. Um, you know, I get to see a lot of plants. Um, and, you know, what are the, what are the bottlenecks, right? Uh, a lot of times it's, it's one of the, the three things I'm going to talk about. So finger joining, pressing, or finishing. So if you start with the end in mind and kind of back into everything, um, it'll really help you out. Um, I just had a phone call last week, and I talked with, with uh, a person that um, was trying to figure out if they were going to do CLT. And they really had no clue about adhesive, um, adhesive choices, the, 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 the parameters or limitations. Um, you know, and they'd already basically designed a plant around some pressing parameters of, you know, uh, 60 minutes open assembly and 60 minutes press. Well, that all sounds good, except it's almost impossible in the adhesive world to have something with that that type of open assembly and really short press cycle. So um, really, you got to understand those things. All right. So if you figure out who you want to be, and let's say you are a low, product, low production guy, um, you know, what's, what's available out there for you? Well, uh, vacuum presses. You know, it's probably the, the least expensive, um, easiest way to get into CLT. Um, most likely, um, it would be a PUR because um, you're going to have really long um, a manual layup. Um, uh, but at that point, you've got to consider that you've got small batch production. So, you know, where would that fit into the world um, in distribution? Um, uh, you know, some place that you have very uh, localized market that you want to try to capture. Um, maybe it's a guy that's a sawmiller and, and wants to do a little engineered wood on the side. You know, so those are some of your options. Uh, and then if you think of like medium production, um, a lot of guys have a hydraulic press. Um, so, you know, it's a cold set adhesive. So now you have now you, you probably have a lot more options. You have uh, melamines, melamine ureas, PURs, um, and PRFs. So, you know, all good structural adhesives. Each one of those has a, you know, slightly different characteristics. Um, 
you know, you can run those with a manual layup, automa uh, automated layup, and then it's batch type production, right? So you, you spend a lot of time laying up and sticking something in a press, pulling it out, um, you know, and, and, you know, repeat. So a um, lot of manual uh, labor, a lot, lot of moving things that, that don't necessarily add up to production. So, and then finally, um, it's got large volume production. And um, that is normally RF pressing. So um, now you've got a couple of different adhesive choices, normally like an MF, MUF, automated layup. Um, and think of this as more like semi-continuous semi production, right? You get a nice flow through the plant, um, flow through design. So think of your, uh, your, your press opening. You push material in there. You cook it. Um, it opens up. It moves out. You get, to, you get this nice continuous flow. Um, and that tends to be the trend in Europe right now. Found out the other day that 75% of the production lines in Europe um, are going to RF press technology. So, um, can't remember which speaker we were talking about, but you know he's talking about you know we need you know we need more volume out there in the world. Uh, get some things down as far as cost, um, you know, and and this provides an option for you. All right, so a little bit of a recap. Um, new and exciting industry. First off, what you know, if you want to get into it, you got to decide who you want to be. What kind of player do you want to be in the market? Um, and then go out and understand the adhesives and the and the press uh, equipment that you know that you're capable of, of purchasing or building. All right, we got any questions out there? No. Okay. All right, well, thank you.